Hello everyone, and welcome to DM Tools with Max McCool. On today's episode of Monsters Manifested, we're going to be covering the Centaur. The Centaur takes up page 38 of the Monsters Manual and begins with a little blurb that goes as follows. I hear centaurs make excellent mounts. Stated by Batley Summerfoot, a halfling adventurer who never read Hooves of Fury, by Irville Greyborn of Sundown. Reclusive wanderers and omen readers of the wild, centaurs avoid conflict but fight fiercely when pressed. They roam the vast wilderness, keeping far from borders, laws, and the company of other creatures. Wilderness Nomads Centaur tribes range across lands with mild to hot climates, where a centaur requires only light furs or oiled skins to deal with inclement weather. They are hunter-gatherers and rarely build shelters or even use tents. Centaur migrations span continents and take decades to repeat, so that a centaur tribe might not retread the same path for generations. These long-ranging patterns can lead to conflict when centaurs encounter settlements of other creatures built along their traditional roots. Reluctant Settlers A centaur that can't keep pace with the rest of its tribe is left behind. Some such centaurs vanish into the wilderness and are never seen again. Those that can bear the loss of their tribe might take up residence among other races. Frontier settlements value the nature knowledge of their centaur residents. Many such communities owe their survival to the insight and acumen of a centaur. Despite their reclusive nature, centaurs trade with elves and with the caravans of other benevolent humanoids they meet during their wanderings. A trader might save the life of a wounded or elderly centaur unfit for long travel, escorting it to a settlement where it can peacefully live out the rest of its days. And that's all we got with the centaur when it comes to lore, but there's already a couple of interesting aspects and characteristics of a centaur that I think we can implement into a couple of adventures or different scenarios that you could use to establish a a session or an adventure or a campaign with your party. But now that we've gone through the lore, let's move on to the stat block and see what that has to offer. So, The centaur is a large monstrosity with a neutral good alignment. It has an armor class of 12. It has hit points that average 45 or 6d10 plus 12. And it has a movement speed of 50 feet. The centaur has a strength of 18, a dexterity of 14, a constitution of 14, an intelligence of 9, a wisdom of 13, and a charisma of 11. The centaur's skills include athletics plus 6, perception plus three, and survival plus three. It has the sense of passive perception at 13, speaks the languages of Elvish and Sylvan, and is a challenge rating of two. On to the ability. Charge. If the centaur moves at least 30 feet straight toward a target and then hits it with a pike attack on the same turn, the target takes an extra 10 or 3d6 piercing damage. Now on to the actions. Multi-attack. The centaur makes two attacks, one with its pike and one with its hooves, or two with its long bow. Pike is a melee weapon attack with a plus six to hit, a reach of 10 feet on one target. On a hit, it does nine or 1d10 plus four piercing damage. Hooves is a melee weapon attack with a plus six to hit, a reach of five feet on one target. On a hit, it does 11 or 2d6 plus 4 bludgeoning damage. And finally, Longbow is a ranged weapon attack with a plus 4 to hit, a range minimum of 150 to a maximum of 600 feet on one target. On a hit, it does 6 or 1d8 plus 2 piercing damage. And that's what we got with the Centaur when it comes to stats. So, the Centaur seems to be a pretty straightforward creature to use, and due to the fact that they are aligned as neutral good, they're probably not necessarily designed with the intent of using them as a monster or creature for your players to go up against as an adversary. But I think that we can still create some interesting encounters, scenarios, and adventures involving Centaurs, even for a party of good aligned or neutral aligned players. So, without further ado, let's get into some adventure crafting. So, immediately, the first thing that comes to mind for me is the concept of a centaur that has been perhaps left behind by its tribe in the way that the lore explains in that final paragraph about how 
if they can't keep pace with the rest of the tribe, they're just left behind. So you could use the centaur almost as a random encounter that your players could come across while they're traveling between points or traveling from one place to another where the centaur is perhaps somewhere in the wilderness, like perhaps in some dense woods, or even if you were to use something to the effect of like a jungle environment, since centaurs seem to enjoy more of a mild inclement biome, they're not necessarily creatures that you would find in high mountainous areas or arctic areas and environments like that although you could implement a centaur in that environment and that could lead to some very interesting outcomes you know that could lead to some some very interesting q a from your players in regards to the centaur and how they even made their way so far out from where they're typically found in the world but either way immediately the first thing that I can think of would be a stray centaur that perhaps is in a jungle or wooded area and is trapped in some way, shape, or form. You could use something like they're trapped by vines or branches or got caught in a thicket of some sort. Perhaps the centaur got trapped by some form of snares or something like that that hunters have placed in the wilderness in order to catch animals, right? Like for food or something like that. And the centaur, unfortunately, has befallen one of those traps and has now become caught in it. And then presumably your players would want to free the centaur, especially if the centaur requests the aid of the players to just free them, in which you could use something to the effect of like if it was a natural trap, right? Let's say it was a centaur that got caught in a web or something like that. You could suddenly invoke a combat with giant spiders and stuff like that that are trying to prevent the heroes or the adventurers from releasing this newly acquired meal that these spiders have in their webs that could last them potentially a very long time. So you could implement a combat there, and if the players are successful in saving the centaur, then the centaur can offer them some form of information or some form of reward, either in information or in an object, a magical item or something of that effect. However, if you wanted to use a centaur as a big baddie, what you could do is you could have that same isolated centaur who has been left alone in the wilderness for so long because they've been abandoned by their tribe and have been left to the elements and to sort of survive on their own because they couldn't keep up. You could have that centaur sort of become frenzied or maddened by the isolation that they've had to endure for so long. Perhaps for all of this time, they've only had their thoughts to go about. Perhaps there's been a lot of resentment, a lot of buildup, and and perhaps there's this errant centaur who has been killing off people on the trade routes. Perhaps there's this centaur who's been killing off a ton of animals and wildlife in the woods or in in the wilderness, and that has perhaps caused the nearby town to starve or to lose their source of food in the way of livestock or even plants and stuff like that, which would be an interesting way, I think, of implementing a centaur as the antagonist or adversary of the players without necessarily being a, an evil creature, so they may be able to negotiate with the centaur Perhaps they'd be able to come to some form of agreement. Perhaps they could bring the centaur into town and the centaur could have some form of role to play in the town. I think that it would allow for a lot of different avenues that could be taken for your players in terms of how to find a resolution to that issue there. If you were using the frenzied, maddened, sort of insane centaur, that could also lead to a very interesting course of action where perhaps the townsfolk have this legend or this myth or this recent story of a monster that has appeared in the thick woods or in the wild who only comes out at night and any form of any hunters or other adventurers or woodsmen or anything like that that have made their way into the woods never make it throughout the night because some strange creature devours or kills them all and you know you could have one individual who managed to survive They went into the woods with their party and they were on watch and they saw this monstrous creature that looked like a horse in the shadows but had the body of a humanoid and stuff like that. And you could play it up as some fiend or demon or something like that, allow the suspicions of the common folk to run wild as it were and make a mountain out of a molehill type thing. I think that that'd be a pretty straightforward and relatively easy adventure to generate and to drop down for your players to overcome or to encounter. 
But there's also another way that you could implement a centaur, I think, or centaurs in an adventure, and then it would give them a bit more of the spotlight, as it were. So, namely, for the second adventure, I'm taking the information from the second paragraph or third paragraph of the lore, where it states that centaur migrations span continents and take decades to repeat, so they don't retread that same path for a very long time, and they can lead to these long-ranging patterns of their migration. And these long-ranging migrations can lead to conflict, right, when they encounter settlements of other creatures and stuff like that that have been p- built upon their traditional roots. What I would do in that instance is I would create a city or a kingdom or something like that, even a camp. You could even create, perhaps it's a, a logging camp of some kingdom, and they're now in conflict with the centaurs because the centaurs have returned after however long, and they need to get past the settlement in order to continue along their migration. And that could lead to some immediate conflict there. You could even lead to conflict in progress as the players approach it, right? You could have effectively the patrons of the settlement in the midst of combat with these centaurs, or perhaps you could have something to the effect of this settlement is being accosted by unknown assailants who are firing off longbow shots at them and killing off their people, their watchmen at night, perhaps anyone who leaves the gates and stuff like that. And the players are sent off to deal with this incursion of what could only be presumed to be bandits or some form of brigand or 'er ne'er-do-well. Again, you can implement something to the effect of one of the people in the settlement claiming to have seen a human ride off on a horse and they sort of just ride by and attack from range with arrows so it can leave your your players guessing and curious as to what it is that they are going up against. And in that instance, you could create a pretty interesting scene or scenario for your players because now they have to decide which side they choose to take or if they can find a happy middle, like a neutral ground that both sides can come to an agreement Especially when you consider the centaur's alignment in general being neutral good, they'd probably be open to some form of negotiation if they can be understood by one of or all of the players. Since centaurs don't speak common, they only speak elvish and sylvan, you would need an individual that could speak one of those two languages or perhaps a wizard with comprehend languages, something to that effect. You'd need someone to play some form of uh, mediator between the two. And you could have a a social aspect there, some social interactions. Perhaps there's a resolution there that doesn't involve combat and stuff of that nature. And it could lead to a pretty interesting change of pace if your campaign or your series of adventures have been very combat heavy and you want to change things up and start up with something fresh. Now, you could also just completely alter the centaurs in terms of their disposition or alignment and just say, well, this band of centaurs are heinous, barbaric brutes, and they don't really care. They're here to trample and destroy anything and everything that's in their path. Now, to incentivize the players, if the players are heroic by the standard sense or traditional sense, they would probably be incentivized to find some sort of peaceful resolution just because it's the right thing to do or the good thing to do. If your players require some form of incentive as to why they would diffuse the situation in a more peaceful manner, you could offer them perhaps some form of reward in the way of resources from the settlement perhaps in some form of resources from the centaurs, right? I think that the centaurs would actually play a much better part in that since they're omen readers of the wild and stuff like that. Perhaps the centaurs will offer the players some form of insight or knowledge on how to take certain paths or back ways or hidden routes through the wild, like through the woods or through the jungle or anything like that, where they can avoid conflict with other wildland beasts, perhaps They can avoid another city or town that perhaps is more of a seedy, criminal, underbelly type of place. Perhaps it cuts the distance that is required for travel between two points by half. Maybe the players are en route to go to some main city and the travel is a week or two weeks by horseback or by foot. And after assisting the centaurs 
with this issue or finding a peaceful resolution, the players are awarded with information on how to traverse through the wilds and take certain pathways or trails that have been established but cannot necessarily be seen by an untrained eye, and they can make their way to this large main city in half the time, in a week, maybe in four days, who knows, right? So I think that that could be an interesting way of implementing a centaur as sort of the main creature for an adventure. Finally, you could implement a centaur as a quest giver in a town. However, I left this one for last because I feel as though it would be perhaps a little too tropey or typical to have an individual of any form in a town with a quest to give the players. I mean, if you if you wanted to use a quest giver, an NPC quest giver in a town, they could be any form of typical individual. However, you can spice it up using a centaur and it could intrigue your players and make them curious as to why this centaur has decided to take up residence in this town. It could be that the centaur is older and their life was saved by an individual who brought them into the town as the lore states where they can peacefully live out the rest of their days. And they have a quest for the players in terms of perhaps they left their equipment, perhaps they left their family's ancient bow in some temple or some shrine in the middle of the wild and they request the players to go into the wild and find this artifact or relic and bring it back to them so they can have their little piece of their history or ancestry or some form of this little piece of their younger life and and of their family tree or of their tribe that no longer exists. You could have the centaur be the last of its tribe in that area, perhaps geographically where your players are on the map. Centaurs have not been around for a very long time, and although their migrations take decades on average and could be generations and generations before a tribe of centaurs is seen again in that area, perhaps this is one of those instances where that band of centaurs was never seen again. You could implement a a scenario where perhaps the centaur in town requests the aid of the players to find this tribe or find any information or any form of clue as to where this tribe was, because perhaps now is in and around the time that they should have been back. Perhaps this centaur has been in the town for, who knows, 25, 50 years, and it's about the time for the centaur tribe, for their centaur tribe to return and for them to migrate through this town and they haven't seen them in a long time so they're concerned and worried and you could create a scenario there where your players have to kind of go and have more of an investigative session where they have to figure out what if anything has happened to these centaurs you could also have the centaur in town request a similar form of aid from the players but perhaps it's to stop the tribe of centaurs that are returning perhaps the tribe that this centaur who is now a patron of the town doesn't want those centaurs to come back because they were brutish and very barbaric and very aggressive and violent and were not capable of solving or settling issues by peaceful means, right? So you could have a more combat heavy encounter there or scenario where your players have to traverse through and figure out what they're going to do and how they're going to deal with this tribe of barbaric centaurs and stuff like that. Finally, there are two other things that come to mind when I think of using a centaur in a settlement as a resident or a patron of this settlement. One would be as some form of oracle, where the centaur effectively behaves as an omen reader for the party and the party has to speak with them and the centaur provides them with some strange insight as to what may be happening in their adventure line or in their quest line and can use a sort of esoteric hidden riddle that the players have to deconstruct and figure out what it is they have to do. Perhaps the centaur tells them in order to progress any further in their quest, they have to go to some place and collect some magical item or destroy this curse that has befallen some tomb or crypt or something like that in order to free the lands and gain access to some other resource or something like that. The second way that I could see a centaur being used as a resident kind of in a town is as a prisoner. Perhaps the centaur was arrested by the by the guard of the town or perhaps by some unsavory type individuals and effectively what they've done is they've put the centaur to work 
in a field or to work as muscle in some form of organization or perhaps as a mount for some form of combat because some individual thought that they would be a lot more intimidating by having a mount that is a centaur and can attack on its own with the bow and arrow and a pike and stuff of that nature. Or you could have the centaur have been perhaps a scout for the tribe of centaurs that are coming through again, sort of circling back to the original idea for an adventure. Perhaps the centaur was a a scout for the tribe and they saw this place and as they tried to return to the tribe to inform them that there's been a settlement that has established itself kind of in the middle of their path, it was discovered and caught and pulled into the town or into the settlement and is now being held captive because no one has seen a centaur in that area for generations, for decades, for half a century, for a century, right? And so the centaur is being held prisoner for that. Perhaps the centaur is being held prisoner because this was post-conflict and the centaurs couldn't break down the fortifications of the town or of the settlement and they decided to flee and this particular centaur was the slowest or was the last in line and got left behind and therefore got kidnapped and is now being held as a prisoner of war in some form, right? In which you could implement some form of negotiation there as well, where the centaurs can communicate with the townsfolk or with whoever runs the town or the settlement settlement for the release of this centaur prisoner, as well as perhaps the traversal through the town so they could continue their migration. Stuff like that, I think, could play out in an interesting way for the players and stuff at your table. All in all, though, I think that the centaur is a pretty interesting creature that you could use. I like that it's sort of got this nomadic tribe aspect to it, where they sort of continuously move about and stuff like that. It lends itself very well, I think, to use centaurs as this random encounter or as a creature that is different and unexpected in that they're not necessarily some bad beastie that the players just have to cut down and move on with, unless you wanted that to be the case with the centaur, which is absolutely doable. And I know that I strayed away from the typical Feywild style of adventure where your players are adventuring through the Feywild and would encounter some centaurs and stuff. Because though I think that the Feywild would be the most typical realm for the centaur to be present in, I think that it would also be very interesting to implement centaurs in a place where it's a bit more mundane and they have these interactions with the types of creatures and humanoids and things of that stuff that are present in the material plane. However, you could definitely do something to the effect even where there's some form of rift or portal or tear in reality, and perhaps the migration pattern of this tribe of centaurs goes through this rift or through this portal from the Feywild into the material plane, or vice versa, or anything like that. But the reason why I used the more typical material plane is because you could always just skin the Feywild around this adventure if your players are in the Feywild. Or you could use these adventures in the Feywild if that's where you want to take your players. Perhaps the things that your players are encountering are once they traverse through the material plane into the Feywild, or perhaps they're already in the Feywild, and the settlement is in the Feywild, or the trapped centaur in the wilderness is trapped in in the woods or the wilderness of the Feywild. But either way, I think that the centaur is a cool creature and can be used in a variety of ways, regardless of the plane of existence you choose to implement them in. But that's all I've got for you fine folks today when it comes to the centaur. Thank you very much for tuning in. I highly appreciate it. On next week's episode... We're going to be covering the Chimera, which I think will be an interesting creature to read about and figure out what we could do. There's a couple of ideas sort of floating around in my mind. But until then, thank you once again for tuning in. If you're listening to this episode of Monsters Manifested on YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, all of that fun stuff, as it would mean a lot and help grow the channel. But until then, I'll see you all on the next one. Have a good day, everyone.